Life's never felt so expensive, and most people are cautious about spending. But IKEA's always been the smart choice for creating beautiful homes on a budget. Right now, IKEA family members can save even more with an extra 5% in-store on eligible purchases. Visit ikea-usa.com slash family for more details. Offer valid starting September 1st, 2022. Limited to qualifying purchases. Exclusion supply. Not valid on services. Discount applied in-store only. Before tax, shipping, and handling. Cannot be combined with coupons. This just in. Reportedly, pigs can fly. <laughs> We're going live to... Can't take another crazy headline? Well, here's something you can appreciate. The MyGM Rewards card gives you best-in-class rewards with four points for every dollar spent everywhere and seven total points earned per dollar spent with GM, bringing you one step closer to a new GM ride. That's the power of appreciation from us to you. Subject to credit approval, terms and limitations apply. Visit MyGMRewardsCard.com. I hope you heard that a little bit for me. And how are you yeah, today? Okay. Are you both okay? Yeah. You're wonderful. How are you? Right. I'm going to ask the first question. You probably heard this question thousands of million times before, but I'd better ask it anyway. What inspired you to get into music? teenager um, uh, which was in the 80s uh, there was so much great music at that time uh, and there was such a big variety of music everything from uh, pop to new wave to heavy metal uh, and it, so it was easy to, to really get caught up in, you know in the music of that time period uh, so I, you know, I started playing drums and, and keyboard when I was about 15 16 years old and um, you know, the rest is history as far as that goes. And for me, uh, I would say my brother John's record collection kind of got me started. Um, also, as a teenager, but it was 
there's an age difference between Diane and I, and uh, I was actually a teenager, like late 70s, early 80s, so I still had a lot of the classic rock that I was working off of, like, uh, you know, Beatles, Rolling Stones, What's Up, What the Who, that kind of thing, Queen, and so on. Um, uh, my friend Mark had got me into the guitar, and one thing led to another, and uh, just trying to get ideas out of my head. Did your band start off at, originally as a different name? Yes, it did. Uh, back in the 90s, we were in a band called Halcyon AD. Uh, it was just kind of back around the local scene, but we weren't really going anywhere because we weren't a touring unit at the time. It was only the two of us. We were writing and recording, but um, at that time, we weren't you know, able to do much more than that because social media wasn't around, you could just go out and do your own videos and, uh, you know, we, um, just, like I said, just kind of battered around, you know, that, the home recording studio a bit. You, I, I, I saw that on the YouTube, you have a, a, a great, um, video called a Black Mariah, is that correct? I don't know if I got that right. Yes, that is correct. I thought it was very good, very good. Where, where did you produce this? Uh, well, thank you. Um, we uh, we uh, started filming that video in uh, September of last year. Um, we uh, the, the song itself is uh, about um, the history of the world's first movie studio that was uh, built at the Thomas Edison Labs in West Orange, New Jersey. And uh, there's a replica of that building um, that still stands um, at the historic site. So uh, we went up there in September, and we did some filming there. And uh, we did part of the filming here at home, too, for a lot of the close-up shots. And, um, and put that all together uh, th uh, with just the computer software on our home computer. I think that's the best way to do things. It reduces the cost as well. For some of these, for, if you making a video could be a very expensive business. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. It, it saves a lot of money when you can do it yourself. Really, uh, most of the money that was spent on that, it probably had a budget of about $2,500, and most of that was probably uh, with insurance to make sure we didn't tear the site up, um, uh, filming permit so we could film on a historic site, and then basically traveling from Atlanta to New Jersey so we could do the shoot. So I guess $2,500 isn't too bad for a video of that quality. So no. I think we did okay. Well, you're a bit like me. I, I do my podcasts from a Amazon Fire tablet and a smartphone, so I keep my technology oh, lo loose. And yeah, it's, the it's the best go. way. <laughs> you don't want it too technical. It gets too ob obscure then. Um, where did you get your name, the Camry Merch? It's a very strange name. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, that actually comes from my late father. Um, he was a, a colorful character, had a lot of catchphrases, all his own. And one of his favorite ones, well, actually my favorite one of his, I should say, is uh, when he would see someone telling a huge lie, he would say, they have more BS than a cranberry merchant. And I thought, oh, that's a bad name. That's, that's a great bad name. Huh. So, oh, yeah. it, it definitely sticks out. It definitely makes you more um, very rememberable. If you're looking people, looking you up, it would be easy to find you. That, that is definitely yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and um, I, I see you have quite a, um, you had a, I saw you had In the Blood and Going Nowhere as um, uh, videos as well. video for In the Blood, and um, actually we are working on the video for Going Nowhere right now. Um, that that song is, uh, it's an instrumental, but the idea behind it is, is it's kind of about like, you know, taking road trips, uh, which is one of our favorite things to do. We like to just hop in the car and, you know, travel to different places. It doesn't really matter if we even have a destination, just to, to drive around and see new things. So that's kind of what the video will be about. Um, we just recently took a, a two-week road trip to do the filming for it. 
What is your normal process of going about writing a song? Do you take it in turns writing the lyrics and doing the instrumentals, or is it shared? Uh, uh, well, I think it, it probably varies per song. I know there have been some things where, uh, chiefly for me, I will come up with more music than I do lyrics, and then I hand it off to Diane, but um, uh, that really varies from one song to another. I mean, there have been some things that she basically wrote the whole thing herself, lyrics and music and everything. We, uh, we don't trade off too much. I think I probably rely on her to do most of the lyrics because she's so damn good at it. So, Although with the Black Mariah, that's one of the songs where we actually co-wrote the lyrics together. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if there really is a normal process. <laughs> it just depends on the song. Well, well, I try to write songs myself, but I, I find it's quite lethargic because I um, wrote a song some time ago about it because I had a near-death experience and I called it Not My Time in Heaven. And I, and I, I was allowed to have permission from an artist to use their music as background because they said I could use it. I always ask permission first. I never do it without permission, obviously, because of copyright yeah. and all that. But um, I found it quite good to write about it like that, because it, it, it gets it out of your system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as you know yourself, it sometimes the words come really easy. It seems like you think, well, where did I pick that from? I like this stuff. I like the fact when you gave me your bio that you like to do unconventional subject matters. So you don't sort of pick, you don't sort of like stick to the classic uh, country or pop or punk or reggae kind of style. song about Brexit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I just, because I, I was so fed up of it, I just thought, oh, I've had enough of this. Well, it's a good way to get it out of your system. Exactly. Yeah. It's cathartic. <laughs> uh, it, I, I, as you say, it, it, it's strange. Um, I always think I wonder if I would, if you had the chance to pick someone you'd like to record with, like alive or dead, doesn't matter. I would like to have done one with Ian Jury, because I like his style of lyrics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Elvis, yeah. obviously, because rock and roll. Yeah, because he's Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's obvious. And I'm a great punk fan, so I would like to choose a bunk punk band and just raw, do a raw vocal. a lot of, um, of texture in their music, um, you know, it's got a lot of energy, but 
there's always that kind of abstract angle to a lot of their lyrics. Um, you know, I've always really admired their their writing and their arranging. Um, so, you know, I, I would love to be able to write with somebody like that. Yeah, I, I, I remember some years ago, I was... Um, we, I managed to watch the Duran Down uh, uh, video, Girls on Film, and yeah, it was yeah. on a, in a um, electronical shop. You couldn't hear the the lyrics, but it didn't matter because we all wanted just to see the video. So we snuck. <laughs> we, we all went in. We all went into the electrical store and just sat sat, sat there, stood there watching the, the video. We got eventually got thrown out, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> well, you see, where I grew up from, I, grew, I used to, I live in uh, Essex, a place called Southend on Sea, and I grew up with punk, country, reggae, heavy metal, thrash. So I grew up with quite a lot of different inf influences in my time. And I think that helps you. I think you. I see some people underrate classic music like classic um, Mozart and people like that. They say, ooh. But I say Mozart was probably the punk of his day. I would say yeah. so, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. He was very, un he sort of like, didn't, like you say, he didn't care what he wrote or how he wrote. If people didn't like it, hey, there's door, bye. yourself to all different types of music um, because they, you know there's there's good and bad in every genre of music you can think of that's for sure now when I presume when you go in the studio and record your album do, do you um, have like a set list that you do and do you like release it as an album or EP and do you put, produce your own cover art This is our, our first time, um, you know, putting out a formal release. Um, and, uh, yes, actually, we uh, did uh, do all the cover art and everything ourselves, too. Yeah, because I, I, I find that's important, trying to think of something that works. Because I basically did, I did my own sort of mini album, my own, my own music, you know, just out, put it on Spotify. And if anybody listens to it, I don't really mind. And I, what I, my my logo is a pair of glasses on top of a cup with a plastic bo with an empty plastic water bottle on it. Cool, that's interesting. But it stands it out. Yeah, it, 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 it people yeah. go, what's what's wrong with that? <laughs> I like it. Yeah, absolutely, and and I I think it's. Uh, you know, kind of nice to, to have control over the, the visual side, you know, of your product, too. I mean, that's that's why we like doing our own videos, to, you know, have control over the, the visual art that, that's associated with the music. Uh -huh. Do you find it difficult in this time and age when, because um, people can illegally download stuff a lot more easier than they used to, do you do you like occasionally give out like a free uh, song so that people can think, oh, well, they've given that free, so I'll go out and buy their album? Uh, well, we, we figure there are plenty of places where people can do that, whether we whether we like it or not. Um, <laughs> you know, and really, uh, I don't have a problem with it because, especially now, you know, that we're just kind of starting out. Um, you know, I think the exposure is more important. Um, you know, just kind of getting the publicity out there. Uh, and, and, you know, it's just to be expected to, to a certain extent. Right, yeah. And I, you, you said um, that earlier you like to go on tour. Do you, how do you go about doing that? Well, uh, I, I was talking actually about road trips as far as, like, traveling. Um, as far as touring, we haven't really um, done that. Uh, 
up until this point just because we are a duo and because we played all the instruments on the recordings uh you know we would have to hire additional musicians uh for the live performances uh which you know in in the future with uh you know if we had a little more success and made a little bit more money at this uh you know we could certainly do that but uh that was also one of the reasons we kind of went the route of of doing videos for publicity because it makes it easier for us to do it as just the two of us that was we got an offer we couldn't refuse from you know duran duran or robert plant are listening to this and you need somebody we're here for you this just in reportedly pigs can fly (laughs) we're going live to can't take another crazy headline well, here's something you can appreciate. The MyGM Rewards card gives you best-in-class rewards with four points for every dollar spent everywhere and seven total points earned per dollar spent with GM, bringing you one step closer to a new GM ride. That's the power of appreciation from us to you. Subject to credit approval, terms and limitations apply. Visit MyGMRewardsCard.com. Important holiday PSA. Do not sleep on Old Navy's Jingle Jammies. From iconic plaids to candy cane stripes to merry elves, Old Navy has every festive pajama print for the fam at prices that would make even Santa jealous. Want to match everyone in Buffalo checks, even your dog? Go for it. Sorry, not sorry. But these PJs sell out fast. So pop by an Old Navy store or visit oldnavy.com. Well, yeah, I mean, you never know. You, you might you get... Uh, stranger things have happened, my friend. Stranger things have Absolutely. happened. Absolutely, that's right. Yes. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think there's sometimes been I've been to concerts where sometimes the so-called second band are better than the, the original band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. Happens, that's for sure. <laughs> I went to see um. Let's see. I've seen Aerosmith live. I see Marillion. Oh, wow, I'd love to see them. Motorhead Live. And their cover band, the band that came on first before them, I think, I'm not, not sure if they're Canadian or American, a band called Sword. Uh, I think they're, I would probably say they're Canadian, I think. And they were very good. They were actually very good. They were a very good band. Who they've heard of you? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> and as you say, you you've got the right attitude. Put yourself out there. If people like your stuff, fine. Because the trouble is, is the people see the reality shows. We got one over here called The Voice, and what's the other one? Uh, X Factor. Yeah, uh-huh. and oh, yeah, they, they have those over here too. Yeah, and yeah, I've got nothing wrong with that. Yeah, fine, but you very rarely you can name how many successful artists have actually had. anything like that in ages but um you know a lot of those artists it's like well they're popular for like 10 minutes and then they fade into obscurity um and you know it, of course when on, on those tv shows you know the the record labels and the producers they pretty much own you so uh yeah I, you know we just kind of like doing it this way and, and at least we have control over our own music and um we can do our own thing yeah exactly well, I've got a friend over in, here in the UK called Jonathan Downs, and he helps um, run a, uh, like a help with a music business called Gonzo. Yeah, he does a magazine called Gonzo Weekly, where he, he uh, showcases alternative music and alternative oh. bands. And I've got, I, I said to him, I'll send, it, send this audio to him, so he might put it on in his magazine or... You may even do a magazine article with you. I can't promise it, but I can. Oh, wonderful! Oh, 
I, I can. I, I, I'll, 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 I'll send this to him, and if he's interested, I'll give him all your information. I mean, it's a free online magazine. Just look it up, and you'll see the sort of style he does. He, okay. He's very okay. good. At, he's, yeah, it's called G O N Z O W E E K L Y, and it's available right. online. It's a free online magazine, and it's got free, loads of alternative bands and uh, about different things as well. It's a co counterculture kind of magazine. And I, I'm also, I also do the cartoons in it, so I, I've got to mention that as well. So. Thank you, Sandow. Those are nice. I like those. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I started drawing some time ago. I'm just, I to, I, I'm not a trained cartoonist. I just do it the way I like to do it. And if people like them, hey. So where are you going? I think, like you say, it, it, I think... The, the, the time has come when people could just if you want to do something and you enjoy doing it and you're not worried all right if you like to be famous we all like to be famous oh, yeah. and we'd all like to be but 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 i think you enjoy it more on the way up than w when you get there It's nice to get a radio play, isn't it? I mean, oh, yeah. at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's also nice to have all these great interviews too, like this one here with you. Well, 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 I, um, I mean, I, I was, I did, used to do, um, so I, I originally got hold of M, MPG Radio. That's the company. Yeah, 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 and, and, yeah, uh -huh. yeah and, and basically. I was going to do um, a blog with various podcasts in it, and uh, for some reason it didn't work out. But hey, that was life, the universe, and everything. But I got some interesting interview uh, interviews and music out of it, and um, I just like learning how from other bands and and letting people kn hear about them, know what they like, who they are, and what kind of stuff they do. stations we've enjoyed listening to the shows as much as being on them just because we're hearing of all kinds of bands that you know we never would have heard on commercial radio and we're finding there's you know the music is so much better oh yeah than what you hear on commercial radio so you know we're becoming fans of you know these bands all over the world that um that a lot of people don't even know about but um you know there, there's amazing talent out there I also love all the camaraderie between uh, a lot, of, like us and a lot of the other indie bands. Um, just kind of looking out for each other, sending links to each other, um, you know, uh, telling r different radio stations, oh, you need to submit to them, oh, you need to turn in an interview with this person. I think, well, I think uh, we have some kind of an informal contest with the delirium trees, I think, as far as tagging each other. <laughs> That kind of thing. It's, it's wonderful. Do you try out anything like ver reverberation or anything like that of yourselves? Uh, well, we're on a number of different uh, platforms like that. Yeah. Um, you know, like uh, Spotify and SoundCloud and, you know, all the, uh, well, the, the major ones anyway. Um, so, yeah, it, you know, that way at least we can uh, – streaming services as well as the, the radio stations. Yeah. Now I'm gonna ask an odd question because I am I am a married person and I know this is true. Do you ever get on each other's nerves? Not yet. <laughs> I just threw it out there because I know I get on my wife's nerves constantly. Long, we're doing pretty good. 
Now, um, you gave me some samples of your free music, which I hopefully you'll give me permission to put on my put on um, on my podcast. Most definitely. I always ask permission first. Obviously, if I put it on YouTube, they'll so probably um, say, "Sorry, this song has been copyrighted and not let you play it." <laughs> because that happened to me before. I got a, I got a free song from a, uh, from someone. I, he gave me permission to put it on, so I got his permission. I put it on, and YouTube took me down. I got a copyright content uh, takedown. companies do that they uh, uh, like you know we we distribute um, through a company called DistroKid and uh, you know I know when you sign up for stuff like that they warn you like even if you're putting your own content on like you know different shows and, and platforms and things like that that go through YouTube um, you know they, they warn you that the YouTube police might send you a well, I can tell you, folks, if anybody's listening, it does happen. I am one of those people <laughs> that the YouTube police decided to say, hey, you cannot put that on there. <laughs> now, I'm gonna, I mentioned earlier that about, my, about my music, and I'm going to give you a slice of what I did for my um, song I wrote about my near-death experience. So hopefully you can hear it. Yeah, that's a taste of it. That's the music but background was supplied by a band called Electric Mug. Who oh, okay, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. We've heard of that band. And they kind oh, of, I didn't know you were behind that. That's pretty cool. Wow. I, 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 um, I did a fantastic um, podcast with them. And they gave me permission to use them. Because I asked them first. I said, could I use this bit of music? And they said, that's fine, yeah. Yeah, obviously I mentioned them in the credits. I, I never do, never go anywhere without mentioning people in the credits. <laughs> <laughs> and like you, you said you like to do alternative stuff. So here is my version of Brexit Nightmare. A little snippet for you. Kind of style. Okay. 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 I don't. My, I'm not. I, I cannot play an instrument to say. Well, tell a lie. I did know know how to play "Hang Down Your Head" Tom Dooley, and "In the Ghetto" on guitar, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> but I. That's a good yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, very selective. Very, yeah, that would be a very selective crowd to play it. Um. Uh, I just mostly well, I, I'm not the greatest singer in the world, but I I have a go. That's that's my opinion. I I just put myself out there, and if anybody likes me, fine. You know, like it's like you say. You know, you don't have to be the greatest paid person. Sometimes you can think of the lyrics. You think, oh no, I'll produce my own. Yeah, yeah, it's the way to do it. You know. People listening, and I did mention the links earlier, but I'd like you to give them as well. 
Where can they go to listen to your fantastic stuff? I know you're on YouTube and various other outlets, so please mention them. Okay, well, our website is www.cranberrymerchants.com. Uh, you can also uh, find our YouTube channel. Uh, it's easiest just to type Cranberry Merchants into the subject blank and, and into the search. And uh, you can find us pretty easy and uh, subscribe to our videos there. On uh, Twitter, our handle is uh, at Cranberry Merch 2. Uh, we also have a, a Facebook group and we're on Instagram. So we're, we're very easy to find uh, just through a search there. Um, uh, otherwise, we're on most of the, uh, the streaming platforms like Spotify and SoundCloud. Uh, our music is for sale on iTunes and Amazon. Um, and, you know, otherwise you can, uh, you know, see us on or, or hear us on Internet stations all over the world right now. And if, I guess if there's anything that was left out, if you go to Google and put Cranberry Merchants in quotes, that would be every. That's the, the whole nine right there. That would be uh, everything that Diane just said and more. I like that. That's a true American expression. The whole nine. I, <laughs> I know what you're referring to. American football is a whole nine yards. Is that the end bit where they score the touchdown? Uh, I take it. I, I'm not really familiar. I mean, I, I'm familiar with the phrase, but I'm pretty sure that's what it means. <laughs> uh, and I'm not I'm even not American. <laughs> I, you know. Uh, uh, well, over here we called it we like football, not soccer. Right. Yeah. I hate that word, but that's just a personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I wa I tried to watch baseball once. I fell asleep. But you probably, if I tried to explain, <laughs> if I tried to explain the rules of cricket, you'll probably be going, "Yes, I think I'll go now." This man turned up, and nobody wanted to talk about anything we need to want to know about. I mean, he just wanted to talk about cricket. I don't want to know nothing about cricket. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I do um, other unique stuff as well, like yourselves. I draw, I uh, write, and I um, I produce my own uh, unique horror host podcast. It's, it's developed from three characters. The first is the Ghostman Horror Host, then it was Horror for the Dinosaurs, but now it's Freddy the Freak. <laughs> and Freddy the Freak is the worm inside your head that tells you to do things that you don't really want to do. <laughs> things like, Hello, Diana, hello, I'm Steve. You didn't really want to be on our show, did you? You thought, who was this person that rang you up one day and said, Oi, be on my show. We thought, no, <laughs> don't go on there. It'd be a complete mess. Something like along that line, anyway. <laughs> it's very loosely based on the character, the Crypt Keeper. Mm -hmm. yeah. tells the Crypt. Oh, yeah, like Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, I, I used to love that. I used to love the um, Tales of the Crypt Keeper. It was a brilliant show. Yeah. Now, before I go, I always ask my guests to do a unique sign-off. Yes, put you on the spot bit. I always like that. I always do this bit. It keeps people on their toes, you see. That's that's why, if I did decide people go, oh, 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 oh. Now, seeing as you're songwriters, I could put you on the spot and say you could do a quick song about you being on the show, but you probably don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it, it, takes, it takes a lot to leave me speechless. You just did it. <laughs> um, so I'll let you have a quick five-second think while you uh, about what you want to do. But that that's what I do. I ask every guest to do it, so don't be worried. It's it's just something I like to throw in because it, I think it puts people, as you say, on the spot. But it, it makes you think a bit more. And people think, wow, they, they like to think of Nick's on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, how about if we 
might be uh, close with a, with a little show ID for you. Yeah, go, go for it. A radio jingle, okay. Uh, yes, and, well, we're the Cranberry Merchants, and you're listening to the Ghost Man Podcast. Okay. Do you want mine for you now? Sure. Absolutely. Are you ready? <clears throat> we are. Oh, I talked to the cranberry merchants today. Not the cranberries you pick from the green grocers. They're not the ones. <laughs> you want to listen to their songs on YouTube and have some fun. They sing about various things that you may never heard of. But hey, that doesn't matter. They're on the internet radio, wherever you can find them. Please look them up and listen in. You might enjoy a sing a song or two. You may even sing along in a mood or two. <laughs> so thank you for being my guest tonight. Thank you, my friend, and good night. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. That's okay. Before Avid Exchange, managing accounts payable took too much time and effort. Coding and reviewing invoices, tracking down approvals, the list goes on. But with Avid Exchange, your AP is automated, so you can review and approve invoices anytime, anywhere. You'll gain greater visibility and control into your workflow, giving you time to focus on more important things. Experience the power of change. Avid Exchange. Learn more at avidexchange.com. That's avidexchange.com. This just in. Reportedly, pigs can fly. <laughs> We're going live to... Can't take another crazy headline? Well, here's something you can appreciate. The MyGM Rewards card gives you best-in-class rewards with four points for every dollar spent everywhere and seven total points earned per dollar spent with GM, bringing you one step closer to a new GM ride. That's the power of appreciation from us to you. Subject to credit approval, terms and limitations apply. Visit MyGMRewardsCard.com.